Hello and welcome back to Storytime at Nana's house. It is so very good to have you here once again. Book I'm going to show right now, it is called The Aristocats. This is an awesome, awesome book and it was produced by my friends over at Benden Books. They've given me permission to share this with you now. So here we go. The Aristocats. Long ago, in a beautiful city of Paris, lived a kind, wealthy lady and her family of cats. There was Duchess, the mother cat, and her three darling and sometimes mischievous kittens, Toulouse, Marie, and Berlus. Madame Adelaide Bonafamilia loved sharing her beautiful home with Duchess and the kittens. They were served the very best food on silver trays. They even slept in their own canopied bed in Madame's room. There were no ordinary cats. They were Aristocats. <laughs> to Louise was a talented painter. Berlioz liked to play the grand piano, and Marie planned to be a great singer someday. Madame loved her cat so much that she wanted to make sure they would enjoy the good life even after she was gone. So one day, she asked her lawyer to visit. I simply want to make a will, she said. She wished to leave her entire fortune to her beloved cats for as long as they lived. Wow. She really did love them, didn't she? Oh, my. She wanted to make sure they would be cared for by Edgar, her faithful butler. When the cats were gone, her fortune would go to him. Downstairs, Edgar the butler was listening to every word through a speaking tube in his room. He was quite distressed that he'd have to wait for the cats to pass out, pass away before he got any money. He's like, are you serious? Cats inherit first and I come after the cats, he muttered. It's not fair. That evening, Edgar stirred sleeping pills into the cat's milk. Oh, that's not good, is it? Your favorite dish, said Edgar, setting down the bowls, prepared a very special way. Creme de la creme a la Edgar. The cats and their friend Rockford, the mouse, lapped up every drop. The cats just managed to stagger to their basket before they fell into a deep as soon as madam was in bed edgar sneaked the cats out of the house to take them to the countryside and leave them <gasps> oh, that's not very nice is it poor cats but Edgar's plans were spoiled. Just outside Paris, two dogs jumped out barking and snarling, giving Edgar a terrible fright. As he swerved, the basket of sleeping cats tumbled out onto the sidecar and Edgar sped off, leaving the basket and the cats behind. When the cats awoke, they found themselves in the rain near a bridge. How had they gotten there, they wondered. Telouise had had a dream. Edgar was in it, he said, and we were all riding and bouncing along. Then he looked around him and added, it wasn't a dream. Edgar did this to us. What's going to happen to us, asked Telouise. Duchess sighed, poor madam, she'll be worried when she finds us gone. The next morning, the cats crawled out of the basket. As Duchess wondered what to do, 
an alley cat strolled by and introduced himself as Abraham de Lacey Guiseppe Casey Thomas O'Malley, the alley cat. <laughs> he gave a friendly smile when he saw Duchess and the kittens, and they smiled back at him. When they told O'Malley they were lost, he offered to help them get back to Paris. Duchess and the kittens were very grateful for his help. Poor madam, in that big mansion all alone, said Duchess softly. She'd always say that we were the greatest treasure she could own, she said. Oops. Man, I just want to skip the page. There we go. After that day and into the night, the little band of cats, Duchess, Marie, Telouis, Bourlot, and O'Malley trudged on toward Paris. Duchess and the kittens were used to riding in carriages, not walking along country roads and across rooftops. By the time they reached Paris, they were exhausted. They're like, oh, I'm so tired. Um, I'm tired, whined Marie. Me too, and my feet hurt, said Belouis. I bet we walked a hundred miles, sighed Telouis. It was still a long way to Madame's mansion, so O'Malley invited Duchess and the kittens to stay at his house. But when they got there, they found that O'Malley already had visitors. A group of alley cats, led by O'Malley's friend Scat Cat, were playing jazz music. Hmm. The whole building was swinging to the beat. The kittens forgot about being tired and joined in the fun. Berlioz, Ber, excuse me, Berlioz helped play the old piano. Deloise kept time to the music, and Marie, you can say that one, sang at the top of her voice. Even Duchess couldn't resist joining in. She and O'Malley, I can say O'Malley, <laughs> danced happily until midnight. Please forgive me, Anna, by mispronouncing some of these names. Not intentional. Oops. Later, after the jazz band left, O'Malley and Duchess sat together on the rooftop, looking at the moon and Paris. O'Malley told Duchess that he wished she and the kittens could stay. You know, they need a, well, you know, a sort of, well, a father around. Duchess wished she could stay too, but she had to think of Madam. I'm sorry, my dear, she told O'Malley sadly. We just have to go home tomorrow. The next morning, O'Malley escorted Duchess and the kittens back to Madam's house. As the kittens scampered ahead, Duchess and O'Malley stopped at the gate to say goodbye. I'll never forget you, Thomas O'Malley, said Duchess fondly. Aww. Meanwhile, Edgar was in the kitchen when suddenly he heard the sound of kittens meowing at the front door. It can't be them, he exclaimed. As the cats came through the door, a sack came down over their heads. You came back, Edgar muttered. It just isn't fair. Edgar took the sack out to the barn and put it in a trunk that was being sent to Timbuktu. <gasps> oh, no! But Rockford the mouse saw everything. He dashed outside to tell O'Malley. Duchess and the kittens are in trouble, said O'Malley. Look, you go get Scat Cat and the Alley Cats, he told Rockford how to find them. And then he set off for the mansion. What's going to happen to the cats? Oh, I hope they're okay. By the time Rockfort returned, Edgar had trapped O'Malley in the barn with a pitchfork. The alley cat stormed in, hissing and biting and scratching the like, 
these. They're not having any of that. Shame on Edgar for being so mean. While the cats dealt with Edgar, O'Malley helped Duchess and the kittens out of the trunk, and then the horse kicked Edgar in that stuffy trunk just as the delivery man arrived. Now Edgar was on his way to Timbuktu. Go cats, go, go, go cats, go, go. Madame Bonfamilia was thrilled to have Duchess and the kittens back. She was also delighted to meet O'Malley. I think this young man is very handsome, she said to Duchess. Shall we keep him in the family? Madame decided to set up a home for all the homeless alley cats of Paris. From then on, all cats were treated as special, wonderful aristocrats. And that's the end. Da, da, da. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I like that story. I hope that you did too. It is time for me to go, my friend. But before I do, I just want to encourage you to continue letting your light shine by being kind. Yes, because you never know whose day you might turn around for the better just by your kindness. Or did you know that your kindness could affect someone for the rest of their life? That would be unbelievable and wonderful as well. Thanks again for stopping by. Until next time, take care of yourselves. God bless you. And always, always, always remember that this Nana right here loves you. Take care.